As a solo video creator, I always look for ways to streamline my content creation process, whether I'm vlogging or filming on the go. And one key piece of equipment is the DJI Neo. This right here is a self-flying 4K vlogging drone that captures unique aerial shots with little effort. And I got to test it out in different terrains while traveling across Canada last month. And I can say it was overall a really great experience. In this video, I will share with you my thoughts on the DJI Neo and how it can level up your vlogging and content creation process. So let me first give you a brief overview of what I will cover in this video. I'll start with an unboxing, talk about the drone anatomy, and then talk about the build and design. Then we will move over to the key features. We'll also dive into the DJI Fly app and how to use it. And lastly, I will talk about the price and different packages and highlight who benefits most from this drone. Now be sure to check out the timestamp below if you wish to jump to a specific section. And don't forget, the product links are available in the video description. Let's unbox this. So this is what you get in the combo package. You get the DJI Neo, you get an RC remote controller, you get the charging hub with a total of three batteries. Two batteries are here and another battery is attached to the drone. And you get a lightning to USB-C and a USB-C to USB-C cable. You also get two additional propellers, a screwdriver in case you need to remove the propellers. And that's about it. All right, let's now look at the drone anatomy. To the front, we have the 4K camera. Then you have the four propellers, which are protected by propeller guards. To the back, you have a power on off button, a quick shots mode button, two sensors at the bottom, and a USB-C port to the back. Moving over to the build and design. The drone's design is similar to that of the DJI Avada, but it's smaller and lightweight at just 135 grams. I believe this is DJI's most lightweight drone that they have ever produced. And what's great about this drone is that it can easily fit in your palm, making it incredibly portable and easy to take with you wherever you go. Plus, it comes with a detachable full coverage propeller guards, and these keeps the propeller safe from bumping during flights and protects them from accidental contact. Now, during my testing, I did crash the drone a few times, but never had any damage thanks to the propeller guards, which is a huge plus also for beginners who are still learning to fly drones. And it also has a max flight distance of seven kilometers. Now the drone also has a palm takeoff and landing feature, which we will explore in the feature section. But to give you an idea, you can perform at least 20 palm takeoffs and landings with one battery. And this to me is more than enough for capturing short clips as well as doing longer flights. Now here's a pro tip. If you have extra batteries, you can charge one with a power bank while flying with the DJI Neo, allowing you for even greater flight time. Now the drone also comes with 22 gigabytes of internal storage, which is actually way more what you usually get with most camera drones. Now keep in mind, you can't insert any external SD memory card, but what's great is that you can quickly connect it to the DJI Fly app, preview your footage, and then download it directly to your photo album or connect it to the computer directly and offload the footage that way. Let's now dive into the most exciting part, the key features of the DJI Neo. So I'll start with my favorite one, the palm takeoff and landing. Now, when you use a traditional drone, you can't really take off immediately. You have to unfold the drone, connect it to the controller, and find a suitable spot to take off. With the DJI Neo, you have everything ready to go. Flying is really as easy as pressing a few buttons. So let me just quickly demonstrate it to you. So the first thing you wanna do is power on the DJI Neo, then position the DJI Neo on your palm with the camera facing you. Then choose one of the intelligent shooting modes by pressing the quick shot button. By default, it's set to follow mode. You'll then hear a voice as you choose your desired quick shot mode. Then to initiate takeoff, long press the quick shot button. It will then count down from three and make sure to hold it up so the camera can recognize your face. It will then take off from your palm and do the action. To safely land the drone back in your palm, 
position your hand underneath it. Now here's a helpful tip. If you want to cancel your flight before takeoff, just press the quick shot button again. Okay, so let's get into the fun part, the quick shots. The DJI Neo offers six quick shot modes, allowing you to capture those perfect moments with ease. The first and most popular one is follow. This one uses AI subject tracking, keeping the subject in the center of the frame, no matter where the subject moves. And this makes it great for activities like cycling, hiking, and running. I tested it out in different environments and it followed me very accurately, even in the most challenging situations. It can take on winds up to level four, capable of withstanding speeds up to 30 kilometers per hour. The reason why I like this mode so much is that I can just simply activate it and the drone will follow me. This way I don't have to think about it and can really enjoy the moment while having these cool shots. Now follow mode is also an excellent mode for vlogging, allowing you to showcase your surroundings while your drone follows you. And you can actually record audio through the DJI Fly app while having the drone follow you, but we'll look at that feature in just a bit. The next quick shot mode is my second most used one, Droney. In this mode, the drone flies away from you. It's a great way to show your surroundings or also take a selfie shot. So not only can you take 4K videos, but also capture 12 megapixel photos. Now, especially while traveling, I love to use this mode to showcase my surroundings. And I've captured some of the most beautiful shots of landscapes and cities using this mode. So next up is circle. This is where the DJI Neo circles around you, a great way to showcase your surroundings. Now in this mode, you do have to be stationary to have the drone circle around you. If you start moving, this won't work. If you want to have the drone circle around you while you move, you can also connect your phone to the controller and use the active track along with the rotation feature to walk and have the drone circle you. And that creates even more of a dynamic shot. Then we have a rocket where the DJI Neo shoots straight up into the sky. Also a great perspective for breathtaking aerial shots. For example, this shot where I walked through a maze looked really amazing from the top. Now, just a quick note in this mode, the DJI Neo captures two shots, one while ascending and the other while descending. Then we have the custom mode where you can select helix, boomerang or direction track. And you can choose those preferred custom modes inside the DJI Fly app. With Helix, the drone circles you and ascends in a spiral while moving backwards. With Boomerang, the DJI Neo circles you in an elliptical pattern. Then we have Direction Track. Unlike Follow Mode where the drone follows you from behind, Direction Track allows the drone to follow you from the front. Now, additionally, you can customize the settings for each mode directly within the DJI Fly app, which we will explore in greater detail later. And this includes options like follow distance, follow height, and camera mode. Another awesome feature for vloggers is that you can capture audio using the DJI Fly app while you're recording with your DJI Neo. The drone uses the phone's microphone to synchronize the audio with the video and cancels out the noise from the propellers. Now to enable audio recording through your phone, you can activate the microphone in the app under the controls option. Now important note, do not turn off the screen or switch to another app when recording. What's also great is that you can connect the DJI Mic 2 and use the noise canceling feature for a more convenient hands-free recording option. So let me now show you how it sounds like recording audio through the phone using the DJI Fly app. But let me first show you how loud this drone actually is. So I've set it to follow mode. Let's start the flight. So the flight noise is at 79 dB, it's actually lower than the DJI Avada 2, but when I now switch over to the phone's microphone, you'll notice that it cancels out all of the uh, propeller noise. What's really cool is that I can walk around and the drone follows me, and this is especially great for vloggers. Now we're also going to test the tracking on the DJI Neo, so let's just run around a little bit. it lost me but it redetects me and 
you can get back into running. But what also makes the DJI Neo great as a vlogging drone is that I can also hold it and vlog with it by using the DJI Fly app and setting the mode to manual control. I can simply press the record button and start recording the video this way while capturing the audio through my phone. So that is also a cool feature and this also allows me to get another different perspective and I don't necessarily have to use another camera to shoot my vlog handheld. Another fantastic feature of the DJI Neo is its versatile control options. Now first, as mentioned earlier, you can use quick shots without the need of a controller. Additionally, you can connect the DJI Neo to your phone via the DJI Fly app, allowing you to use the virtual joysticks. And this method is excellent for achieving more controlled shots. And it's also something I used regularly to operate the drone. It lets me take quick shots while manually controlling the drone, especially when I need to fly through things. Now here's another pro tip. If you're using quick shot modes in tricky spots, like taking off a suspension bridge, I recommend connecting the DJI Fly app to the drone. That way you can quickly stop the action if the DJI Neo loses track of you or flies into something. Now what's truly impressive is that you have up to 30 meters of HD video transmission directly from the drone to your phone, providing a clear view of what you're filming. You can connect your phone to the remote controller for even greater control over your aerial shots, which is by the way, the third way you can operate the DJI Neo, allowing you to use it like a traditional drone. Now, if you're into FPV, you can also grab the RC Motion 3 or the FPV remote controller with the DJI Goggles 3. This way you can fly manually and hone your FPV skills. And I totally suck at FPV. So this to me is a great way to get started. So you can really see how the DJI Neo offers a lot of control options. That way you can choose what works best for you depending on the situation. So let's talk about the video quality. The DJI Neo is quite impressive. It can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60, 50, and 30 frames per second. Now with its single axis gimbal stabilizer, including electronic stabilization, it does a great job of keeping the footage smooth even when it's windy outside. Now for social media content like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, the image quality is great. I mostly use the quick shot modes, but if you're looking for more control over your image, you can connect the DJI Neo to the RC remote controller. With the DJI Fly app, you can easily switch to manual settings and tweak things like ISO, shutter speed, and white balance to get the look you want. Now, currently there aren't any ND filters available. I'm sure companies will start producing these ND filters so that you can use them on the DJI Neo to achieve a more cinematic look in your video. So let me walk you through the DJI Fly app. I have the DJI Neo turned on and I'm inside the DJI Fly app and you can see that it has already been detected. I can either select connect here or I can head over to connection guide and then select the DJI Neo and then we get different connection options. So you can connect it to your mobile phone, RC or RC with goggles three. But for now, I'm gonna keep it simple and connect it to my mobile device. And that is also what I use most often. So select that and you can see the DJI Neo appears. I'm going to tap on it. And we're now inside the camera shooting page. So starting at the top, we have the arrow, which leads us back to the home page. And I can select go fly to head back again. Then we have the takeoff information. So right now it's permitted. Then we have the battery life of the drone, which is 79%, the recording time and the Wi-Fi connection. Then we have a real time view of what the camera is seeing. And there's actually almost no delay. Right now it's connected to the home Wi-Fi network. Then to the right, we have a slider which controls the tilt of the gimbal. And you can see it's really smooth. Then we can choose between the quick shots as well as manual control. So when I select manual control, you will see that the image gets darker and that is because it will use the manual settings that I dialed in when I connected my phone to the RC remote controller. Now something else I wanna show you when you're in a manual mode, you can switch between video and photo. I can also tap hold to take off. 
and then you get these virtual controls. And then I can tap this button and then long press on land, select OK, and it will land back safely. And you can actually start and stop recording even if the drone isn't flying. This allows you to hold the drone and, you know, vlog handheld with it. And when I now select one of the quick shots, the camera settings will be set back to auto. Then we have the mic icon. So when I disable and enable it, it tells me that I can now use my mobile device or an external microphone to record audio for aerial videos. And important is during the recording, do not turn screen off or switch to another app. So this is especially cool for those who want to use the DJI Neo for vlogging. Let's now head over to album. This is where all the files are stored internally. I can also download it straight to the photos app by selecting the clips and then selecting this download button. There's also a quick transfer option if you connect the phone to the RC remote controller. And if you head over to the saved, you can see all the clips that you have saved to your photos app. When you head over to the three dots, you get your preferences. So I usually disable skin effect and body effect. So let's now head to the settings. So in here we have our smart shots. So when I tap on one of these quick shots, let's select follow for example, we can adjust additional settings such as the follow distance ranging from close, medium to far, and then the follow height ranging from low, flat to high, and the camera mode. You can switch between the video and picture depending on the camera mode. You also get a nice preview of what this mode will do as well as a description. Then we also have custom where we can choose one of these three quick shots. I prefer direction track where the drone follows me from the front. Then we also have camera settings. For the highest resolution, I recommend you choose 4K. For the frame rate, 30 frames per second. The color profile, only normal is available. And for the encoding format, H.265 to save on storage space. Then below, you can also format the internal storage. Let's now head back. Let's now choose more settings. In here, you have some calibration options, uh, the battery cycle count. In the control section, you can select the unit, uh, calibrate the gimbal, as well as recenter the gimbal if you want. Then we have the about page where you have additional information. So yeah, as you can see, the interface is pretty simple and straightforward, making it really easy to operate the DJI Neo via the DJI Fly app. Regarding pricing, you've got a few options based on what you need. The DJI standalone package gives you a drone and one battery for just 211 US dollars. If you're looking for a bit more, the DJI Neo Fly More combo includes the drone, three batteries, a charging hub, and the standard DJI RC N3 remote controller, all for 378 US dollars. And if you're thinking about expanding your setup, you can also grab the DJI Goggles 3, the DJI RC Motion 3, or the DJI FPV Remote Controller 3 separately. So who is the DJI Neo 4? I think it's perfect for beginners diving into the world of drone flying and for vloggers and content creators looking to capture everyday moments easily. Really ideal for those who film on the go a lot like I do, as well as for spontaneous shoots, like when you're traveling and want to capture those special moments. What I especially like to use the DJI Neo 4 is to grab different B-rolls of myself without needing a camera operator. This way I have different shots from different perspectives, making my content more engaging for my viewers. What I find super nice is the palm takeoff and landing feature, which makes capturing shots so easy and quick. And it also doesn't get as much attention. It is still loud, but compared to the other drones, it is quieter. The Neo really feels like your personal videographer packed with a bunch of intelligent features like AI subject tracking and quick shots to capture these dynamic footage hassle free. Now let me know what you guys think about the DJI Neo and if it would be something you would consider using in your content creation process. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.